this is Cece Camp again, Director of Campus Archaeology. It's December 2020 during the COVID pandemic and I'm doing videos on the service road construction site where we are finding lots of artifacts dating to the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s. It appears as though this site was a large dump site, what we call an archaeological midden, a trash midden, uh, where people were dumping trash for Michigan State University's campus during that time period. And I'm going to briefly explain, explain some of the site stratigraphy that we're seeing here. This is a really large project. Just to give you a sense, I'm going to climb up this hill here. So you can see this is a huge project, gigantic project. And behind me is a trench that I have been working in. Um, and you can see there's a really, really dark black layer, an ashen layer. And that's where we're finding all of the trash. Now, stratigraphy refers to the different layers of soil that we find as we dig in the ground. And it's really important for us to figure out what happened at the site using stratigraphy. So stratigraphy is used to date the different layers in the soil that we're excavating. And we use a variety of methods to date the different layers, which we'll be talking about in different videos I'll briefly mention today in this video. Um, so what happened here? If you look at the topsoil, which is kind of the first, uh, maybe five centimeters, 10 centimeters from the grass down, there's artifacts in it. They're pretty limited, but there are artifacts in it. And what we believe happened is that when they were doing construction on this site uh, many years ago to put in utilities, that's what they're doing today, is they're putting in more extending utilities, so that they removed the topsoil, put it aside, and then put in I'll give you an example, one of these utilities, a pipe behind me. And uh, they dug out dirt. They may have moved that dirt somewhere else. They may have left it at a landfill on campus or somewhere else. And they put in fill, which is the kind of light brown layer that you can see right here. It's all around me. It's fill. There's no artifacts in it. It's sterile soil. Nothing's in it other than it's just dirt. So this was to fill in the pipe after they removed soil, and then they put the topsoil back on the ground, back on top of everything after they put fill in. During that project, and I see an artifact, so I'm gonna grab it right now. Oh, that's cool. Little turquoise ceramic fragment. I know it's probably hard to see a little turquoise ceramic fragment. So there is some, some artifacts in the topsoil, and the reason is because when they put this pipe in, I'm assuming behind me and other utilities that they, like I said, moved that dirt that they dug out of this trench that likely looked like this dark ashen black layer here that you see. So they removed some of this trash dump, put the dirt somewhere else, and then put in this, this really light brown dirt that you see all around here with no artifacts. So that explains why in the topsoil I found an artifact like this is because they removed some of the topsoil and then they put it aside, put the pipe in, took the dirt that was from the trash dump out, this dark ashen layer here, that there's some still in this pit here, put it somewhere else and then brought in sterile soil, this fill, this feels very different than the soil that was originally here. It's all around here, that it's all around here. So um, when we look at stratigraphy, we try to reconstruct what happened. I just reconstructed what happened, I think, in this trench. <laughs> um, another way to figure out what happened is to look at the stratigraphy. And as I said, you can really see the difference between these two soils. Um, we take our trowel, and normally I wear gloves, but let's see, I'm going to grab it. I'm not going to touch the soil. We try to trace out where one soil layer ends, like this one here that's a fill, that's a light brown color that has no artifacts in it, it's sterile, and where another soil layer begins. Usually we map the depth at which uh, this soil change takes place, where the new layer begins and the old one ends. Because of COVID-19, I'm really short-staffed and I'm not able to do that. There's some really good restrictions on campus. It's keeping everyone safe. 
Uh, but normally I'd have a lot of people out here to help me to do that. But I'm an essentially, like I said, a football field size midden. So our priority has been to grab the material culture, the artifacts, and document as much as we can, given the constraints we have. But if we were doing this the way an a good archaeologist would do it, we would be mapping out where these soil changes end and where they begin across the entire gigantic site here. So that an archaeologist who comes back in the future can go and look at our report and say, okay, I know that in these coordinates on the site, this is where the fill ends, this stuff here, and the ashen layer with artifacts starts, where this starts. So where the fill ends and where the the artifacts start so I can go in and be a part of the construction project and mitigate so we can collect artifacts from the 40s and 50s although there are some older artifacts so another thing about stratigraphy is that there's this assumption that as you go further down into the ground the soil is older and the material culture is older well that is not true for this soil here that I just talked about the top soil <laughs> up there the grasses uh, the topsoil is actually older than a lot of the dirt around me. This fill here, this fill was added, like I said, when they put in a pipe like this here behind me. And this is newer. The stuff on top actually dates to the time period that the stuff down here dates to because they took the topsoil, moved it, and then, like I said, put it on top of the fill when they were done with this project. So. So you really have to think about what you're finding. And you also need to, normally, under non-pandemic circumstances, you need to document where you're finding artifacts in the stratigraphy. So if we had more staff, we would probably map and do what we call a soil profile of where we're finding all of these artifacts so that we can go back and date these artifacts and find out if there's newer artifacts up here where I'm at and older ones down here. So um, we usually put artifacts in a bag that's labeled how far down they're found in the ground and potentially with a coordinate of where they were found on the site usually. <laughs> uh, but given the circumstances, the size of this project and my limited staff, we can't do that. Um, I, what I've been doing is kind of walking across the site, which is huge. I'm not going to go around too much today because I, I don't want to bother the other workers so you can kind of get a sense. It's gigantic. Um, what I normally do on this site every day is I look at the back dirt, the dirt that they pulled out of a trench. I try to see if any of the artifacts look different than some of the artifacts I've seen. Other parts of the site, here's an example of the trench. Um, I've also looked at, I've kind of walked through the whole trench as they've expanded to see if different areas of the trench correspond to different time periods. So I'm looking at if the artifacts, the types of artifacts change. Like in some parts of the trench, there's more metal. In other parts of the trench, it seems like there's more personal facts, like people's shoes and clothing. Um, so that's something I will write down in my report so that if someone comes back, maybe it's me in 15 years, who knows, uh, comes back and works on this project, we can go back and reconstruct what areas of the dump have certain types of artifacts, especially if we'd like to collect certain things like personal effects. We found that certain areas of the trench have child-related artifacts, lots of Gerber um, baby food bottles. So that's something that we're interested in studying, is how certain areas of the site correspond to certain activities and behavioral patterns. Uh, this part of the trench that I'm working on seems to have some... Uh, different kinds of ceramics. Normally we find a lot of what we call institutional wares, like this piece down here. Um, this is a Michigan State University ceramic with green, go green, <laughs> um, green annular band on it. It's a little plate. We find this stuff everywhere, everywhere on this site. So this is like ubiquitous, it's everywhere. We find whole versions of this everywhere. I'll show you an example. Hold on, I'm getting it out of my bucket. So we found an entire bowl. It has a maker's mark. That'll help us date this particular pattern, although we're pretty good at knowing that. But we find a lot of whole MSU, Michigan State College 
ceramics that were used in the dorms, and which is kind of interesting. I don't know why we're finding so many whole institutional ceramics. That's a mystery that hopefully we'll, we'll solve. Maybe they shifted to using other kinds of institutional ceramics. We found a variety of other institutional ceramics without that pattern on them. So maybe they got rid of all the ones from MSU, MSC, and shifted to using a different kind of pattern. Something we're hoping to solve during the coming year. Um, but we're finding a lot of different kinds of artifacts, like ceramics here, that have different kinds of patterns that aren't institutional. They're more of what we would call like domestic ceramic. I know it's hard to see. We'll, we'll have more of these on our blog, but um, ceramics that have different kinds of patterns, ceramics that are made of different kinds of um, paste. This one's kind of that turquoise one I think I just found. Some that have different patterns. Uh, and we think some of these are older. Maybe students brought them with them. Maybe they came from their homes. But that's another archaeological mystery you want to solve is why do we have this diversity of ceramics in certain areas of the trench. The northern part of the trench seems to have the most diverse kinds of ceramics that we found out here. So there's lots of archaeological mysteries. Stratigraphy is one of the ways that we solve some of those mysteries and document what happened on a site. Uh, and thank you so much for listening. This is just one of several videos we'll be doing this summer of 2020 to document what campus archaeology does for Michigan State University. And uh, stay safe. Wear your mask.